Hi guys, welcome back to round five of the Prague Special Championships. I am Benji, and I'm here with the lovely Lydia. Uh, we're going to be bringing you commentary from round five, where we've got another uh, interesting matchup, <laughs> both including Zorowark and Buzzwall again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we will bring some very well-known players to you. We have Robin Schulz versus Tom Hall. Tom is going to pilot a Buzzwall Garbodor carving deck, which we already have seen today. And uh, what is Robin playing? Uh, he's playing just your standard Zoroark Galissapod. Um, he does have the inclusion of Mew EX and the Oranguru as well, very similar to the list that we saw earlier from Tord. Yeah. Uh, however, we'll swipe over now and we'll start kicking into the game. Yeah, looks like they are ready. Uh, I think actually Robin and Tord are playing the same 60 cards. Uh, yeah, it looks as well very similar. Flip shows. Looks so very similar. They are ready to start and uh, they got a sign and uh, yeah. Yeah, Joe just kicked us off. Uh, Tom was just saying to me earlier, he was upset that he wasn't on stream earlier today. So I was like, we'll get you on. <laughs> and then when I told him he was playing Robin, he was like, no, I'm going to lose on stream now. So. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, you got to be confident, although you see a big name like Robin in front of you, you got to keep confident, and oftentimes by letting that intimidation factor to get to you, uh, you can start yeah. misplaying. So it's important that Tom keeps his cool here and doesn't worry about it too much. Uh, but we see the strong energy and the fighting fury belt come down straight away, and the early game N. Yeah, N is not the worst supporter at the very start, uh, especially as in those fighting decks, you usually don't play Bridget. Uh, as we already mentioned before, so and in your first turn isn't isn't really bad. Yeah, I think that with Brooklet Hill and Nestball, you have a really easy time yeah. getting out your fighting Pokemon. So Bridget isn't really the necessity. Um, it doesn't look like Tom plays uh, a Lily or anything. No, oh, he, no, he, he does one, one Lily. Lily. Yeah, so perhaps he would have preferred to see that early on in the game. Of course. But it at the at the same time he didn't play that many cards from his hand, so. Drawing up to eight might not have been the best thing. You might have been better off getting a brand new six cards, depending on what his hand was like. But he started getting out everything he needs straight away. He's got down the Trubbish really early, which will be a very big oh, part yes. of this game. Uh, with Garbador's Garbatoxin ability, he will be able to stop Robin from trading if he, will, if he is able to keep that active. Yeah, but we'll see how Robin is going to start the game. He has a Tapu Lele start, which is, of course, nothing you want to see, but it happens. And as we already saw before, Tapu Lele is also a quite decent attacker. Yeah, I think, well, obviously, seeing the Cynthia come down straight away, that's probably not the most ideal thing for Robin. It's no. quite important for this deck to get a turn one Bridget out. Um, but as you said, yeah, Lele in most games is a really good attacker. Um, however, in this, you might want to be careful leaving Lele on the active with Buzzwall's ability to take big knockouts early on in the game. Yeah, true that. Uh, but Robin doesn't look to have drawn into anything that's helpful to him here. He puzzles to switch Ooh. around those top three cards of his deck. But he drew into an N. Uh, well, let's see. I, I haven't really... Do you know what card he decided to put on top? Uh, I think he left it as it was. I think there was a Cynthia yeah. and an N in the oh, top of those okay. three cards. So either one of those is pretty okay for him. They'll both draw on the same amount of cards. Um, however, the real question here is, does Tom play an energy switch in his... Yeah, he does play one. It yeah. is actually possible for Tom to take the knockout this turn with an elixir Ooh. and an energy switch as well. Um, and talking to a few people before this round started, Tom Hall apparently hits all of his elixirs. Oh. A well-known player wow. for a really high <laughs> elixir percentage. So he's probably feeling pretty confident about being able to take the knockout this turn. So it, but he oh, ultra he balls away an elixir. Uh, that suggests that he might have another one in hand. Yeah, or, or maybe he's just, well, he, maybe he has not the energy switch or doesn't want to be too greedy. Sometimes it's also about the safe plays, and oh, it looks like Garbatoxin was way more important for him. Yeah, I think that Garbatoxin also seals up the game in a very similar way. Although he's going to be two shot on the Lele now, it means that he can't actually wonder tag. Uh, Robin can't actually wonder tag on his next turn unless he has Field Blower. As well as that, he's not going to be able to use Trade yeah. 
yeah. if it stays active as well. So he did actually opt to keep the Cynthia at the top. Yeah, I think it was also a smart play to just leave the cards as they were because that could have like signed to Tom like, well, all three cards are not that good, so it doesn't really matter to me. And he kind of fooled Tom a little bit. So it could have also been just a little mind game. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me as a, uh, with a player of Robin's caliber. Uh, all of the little intricate things like that do come into play. Um, he does actually hit a Tapu Lele in hand, which obviously would be really nice at a normal pace for his next turn, but he can't actually drop it down at the minute without hitting that field blower. Oh, yeah. And that's also, well, it's nice to see that Tom uh, decided to go for the Garbodor and not for the fast knockout. So he, he played it safe and said, well, I'm not so sure if I could take the knockout here. So if this game continues, I'll better make sure I'm in a good position. Yeah, I think he's in a stronger position now. Um, the Garbotoxin, as we said, is going to be the defining card of this matchup. And it all comes down to whether Robin can hit those field blowers. And obviously, without trade uh, being on, um, his chances of hitting them are quite low. Although, he did just draw win off the end there. So, yeah. uh, he also has an Ultra Ball plus a DC in hand, which means that we will probably see Zoroark next turn. Uh, Tom just debating here whether to attach this final fighting energy. Um, I, don't, I don't see any reason... Well, I'm unsure about that. Is he able to knock out this Lele this turn? He's doing 30 plus 40 plus 10, which is 80. So that, it seems weird to me that he didn't attach there and go yeah. for the knockout. Main reason being is just because, obviously, um, Tom is playing a Galissapod Zero Art list. He's got plenty of access to Acer Rollers. Uh, and plenty he of has access an to it. He hand. does have one in hand, so it almost seems that all of that work that Tom's put in early game is just going to be lifted back up off the board, and Robin's going to reset everything from the start. So, um, however, he ultra balls away the Acerola. Oh, so <laughs> looks like we're doing a lot of wrong calls here. Uh, he's playing Tapu Lele, and. He can't use the ability because Garbotoxin is active. He had the field blower in hand though. I don't know why he didn't. Maybe it's not on his bench and well, maybe he hasn't played it out. Just put it there and I don't know. Uh, Acerola? Yeah. Acerola. Oh, he oh, had, he had two Acerola, Acerola, Acerola in hand. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, this seems fine now. I didn't realize that he had the second Ace Roller in hand, so obviously that play now seems a lot more viable. Yeah. Uh, outputting a 110 damage onto Tom's Buzzwall, and of course, once that Buzzwall does go down, Tom doesn't have too much else going on to him. However, that Carbink has one energy on it, ready to go if it does evolve into a Carbink Break, allowing Tom to set up another attacker quite yeah. efficiently and quickly. Yeah. I think Tom's now maybe regretting he did not take the early knockout because that would have left Robin in a very bad position. But now, uh. I think with the early knockout as well, it would have forced Robin to have to have evolved his Zorua um, yeah. into Zoroark, um, meaning that then Tom could take an easy two prizes then with another Buzzwall um, attack, whether it be absorption or knuckle impact. Uh, I j it seems very strange to me that he didn't go for that early knockout. As I said, that Acer Roller was almost a guarantee that it was going to happen. Yeah. It's a very common card to see in the deck. Um, obviously, he plays two just, of them he plays and two, one Max And he plays a Max Potion as well. You know, so three outs to completely heal Tapu Lele. Yeah. Um, it almost seemed like a guarantee that he'd have and, something there. And even with no Acer Roller in hand, he had Field Blower and Tapu Lele. So he could have go went for that as well so uh, robin does hit another dce so that's gonna be the two hit knockout with energy drive and he hits the evo solo as well so we're probably going to see a's well not probably we're going to see a zara work come down um robin now finally being able to trade because uh he field blurred the guard yeah. uh, floatstone 
and a Fighting Fury Bell away. Yeah, yeah. with Garbatoxin off, obviously Robin is free to trade away his hand <laughs> and get more stuff out. He's probably hoping for a second Zoroa here if he does trade, start getting up more of his Zoroarchs and establishing his board state a little bit more and yeah. sort of pushing Tom into a corner where... You know, I think that Robin's upper hand in this matchup is actually being able to draw cards without having to use a supporter and being able to pull off those combos that Tom's deck can't really do. He needs to use supporters to draw cards. And, you know, as far as his turn goes, is multiple attachments. So I think that Robin, under no lock of ability, is definitely in a much stronger position than Tom at the yeah. minute. And Tom, even with his a little bit better start, wasn't really able to build up a lot. He now has carbing with one energy, but he has no carbing break in game. And also he does he have has ultimate. no. Uh, yeah, but also he needs to decide if he goes for the break because, well, he does not really want to attach energies to Garbodor. It's a case of right now where what Tom really wants to see is a Brooklet Hill. Yeah. Uh, that would help him get out another attacker, then be able to grab his carbink break. However, you are seeing him debate quite heavily over this Ultra Ball. It doesn't look like he's got a nice hand to discard stuff either. Yeah, and it looks like Tom is not playing Brooklet Hill, so that is not an option for him. Oh, he's not playing he's Brooklet not Hill? He's not playing Brooklet Hill. Oh, okay, that's crazy. <laughs> But we saw that before he's also now playing artillery so and the carbon break does come down and he's sycamore so he's able to grab himself a brand new hand of cards oh um, he got a buzz wall in hand okay he's got the elixir as well we could see a buzz wall with all three energy on it by the end of this turn and a fighting fury belt Oh, and here we see our carving break scan, oh, we see finally. <laughs> we finally have it. It's crazy. It looks so amazing as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we see Tom actually put down the Fighting Fury belt on the garb. Uh, obviously, he's oh. noticed how important it is to make sure that Garbatoxin stays active. Um, however, he can f fall victim now to a Guzma play, trapping that garb in the active. Yeah. Attaching fight, Fighting Fury Belt or any other item that is not Floatstone is actually not what you want to do to Garbodor. Garbodor has been around in the game for a very long time. It had uh, an almost reprint. They only changed uh, the attack, but the ability was the same. So it's around for like three or four years. I think four now. Four years as well as Floatstone and that was also always the combination, the, the tool you wanted to attach to Garbodor. Yeah, it's pretty hefty retreat, uh, three retreat costs there on that Garbodor, so uh, he could definitely fall victim to a Guzma play here. However, he knows that right now the Garbatoxin is established, Robin's played a Bridget, however he knows that he's not going to be able to start trading this turn, so he may get Another two prizes with this buzz wall before Robin can start applying any real pressure to him. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that Robin decided to go for a ta Tapu Koko. Is it? Yeah, it's a Tapu Koko. Um, it's a quite good attacker to deal some, to spread some damage. And it also has no retreat costs, uh, which makes it easier to get some first impression combinations because you uh, want to have the Glycopod on your bench at the beginning of your turn and somehow needed to be in the active position uh, to use first impression with the additional damage output. And we see the first impression come down right as you mentioned it there and the floats down on Lele. Uh, another reason as well we might see Tapu Koko come in handy in this matchup is as we previously mentioned Glycopod's GX attack can max out at 180 yeah. damage with the choice band but with one fly and flip he is then able to knock out a buzz wall so that tapu coco's fly and flip could become very integral as it's not very standard and we know that tom isn't playing any healing cards in his deck so that 20 damage would ultimately stick taking that buzz wall to a permanent 170 damage 
Yeah, yeah that's, HP. that's true. He's not playing any healing cards. He is playing Fighting Fury Belt, so, though, so uh, uh, he can add up the HP of his Pokemon. Field Blower. Robin just wants Field Blowers in this game. Because <laughs> he's answered it. Fighting Fury Belt, Field Blowers. Garbatoxin, Field Blowers. Yeah. And I imagine that at some point he will probably double puzzle a time <laughs> for a field blower. How many field blowers is Robin actually um, playing? Um he is playing a grand total of two. Two. Two yeah. two field blower. Uh, we've seen him use one. Uh, the Arnhem Prize, which means there is another one sitting in his deck somewhere. Um, it's just a case of whether he hits that <laughs> sooner rather than later, because he's really being pushed backwards now by Tom. That Buzzwell taking another two prizes there and we see another Zoro coming into play uh, of course he cannot use his trade abilities yet but uh, yeah we'll see when Robin is going to be able to turn off the Garbatoxin ability oh screen went black then <laughs> um, yeah um, so yeah as you said uh, the fight and fury belts come down on the buzz wall so actually that fly and flip doesn't actually seem so relevant now um, another Galissapod coming down though, which means it does open up the opportunity for Robin to use first impression see if he hits Bridget. an energy. See another Bridget oh, for the Mew, X. of course. Uh, another card that's just absolutely integral to take down these decks. Obviously, again with Garbodor active, that Mew's ability can't actually work right now. However, if he is able to get rid of it somehow, and that Mew could really swing this matchup back in his way. And he does get the DCE on the top of that puzzle. If he just puts it there, uh, we could see a good next turn. I think he opted to go for the grass energy. So he can come in next turn with a first impression. Yeah. This this uh, Tapu Lele has a float zone attached to it. So he can simply attach the energy, retreat, and then use first impression for 120 And we see a Guzma. And, oh, and, and Robin, Robin is just goofy. He knows that he probably, most probably would have went for his Galissapod there, taking out all of yeah. his attackers that weren't overly weak to Buzzwall. Um, and yeah, he, the last thing that Robin really wants to do in this matchup is have a Zoroark in the active because that essentially says to Tom, hey, this is two free prizes. Yeah. So... Uh, very well played by Tom there. He managed to keep up the pressure even after misplaying slightly by not knocking out that Lele early on. Uh, he managed to pull it back and I think that he just kept up an immense amount of pressure and Robin just didn't draw into the pieces that he needed. Yeah, exactly. And we also saw that Robin had a, a bit of a uh, uh, slower start than Tom had. So yeah, that's, that's how it works. If both players continue to draw okay and to have options to to stay in game and put some damage uh, on the field that's how it works yeah i think that it also came in handy for tom that he had that carving ready to go um obviously by using that break he was able to get the yeah. two strong energy back on the buzz wall early on which ultimately was the thing that sealed out the game there um but hopefully this game Robin manages to get his board set up a little bit better. We have a bit of more of an exciting match. Um, Robin also needs to hope that the Garbatoxin doesn't get stuck on as early as it did. Um, it became active very early last game and it stuck. Oh, it and looks Tom like has decided not to use the price. Oh, no. oh no, they are not. Okay. It's fine. Perfect. Why? This is such a cool addition. Why aren't people using it straight away? I would be all over this. I'd be like, price cam. Yeah, but I mean, you have to imagine they're probably, uh, they, they, there's a lot of tension, it's round five, but it's only top eight, so with one loss, they are most probably out of top eight range, and they are playing on stream, so they may be also a bit nervous, so you just do what you're used to, and you're not used to put your prize cards on the yeah for for you guys at home you you of course don't see it we have like a space of uh, plexiglass between two tables and that's where our players put their price cards on uh well early on back into the game uh 
as much as we could talk about prize cams all day because <laughs> they are amazing but uh, we do see Robin actually get the Bridget turn one this time uh, he's definitely going to be a lot happier with that than the Cynthia that he had to play last game uh, he does grab uh, Azorua, Wimpod and Tapu Koko and we're most probably going to see the Zorua come out of the active as soon as he possibly can realistically as he doesn't want that to fall victim to any easy knockouts yeah <laughs> exactly. Uh, Robin is attaching uh, a grass energy to his wind pot uh, already, and uh, we see Peril City going down, limiting Tom's bench space to uh, only three Pokemon. Uh, it's interesting, or it's something we should keep in mind that this also means that Robin's grass Pokemon deal 20 damage less. Yeah, oh, and two energy in the discard already wow. uh, yeah as he said though uh, dealing 20 less uh, could actually become very important in this game um, as we said previously um, with the fighting fury belt on buzzwall that means that even two first impressions don't mm -hmm. knock it out so and we see the ultra ball for the buzzwall a float stone on the carving uh, I think Tom here yep I was just needs an energy and then perhaps a supporter and he plays end and that seems like a pretty perfect first turn hand oh definitely uh, it's interesting that Tom managed to start both games with the carving he's only playing a 1-1 line of carving at carving break but that's what happened I mean, it's always the Pokemon you don't yeah. want to start the most that ends up starting, right? If you don't want to start your Tapu Lele, you start your Tapu Lele. <laughs> That's just the way the game works. And we see the Nest Ball as well. Tom keeping up the tempo. As much as Robin might have had a better start this game, Tom is not letting him run away with it. Yeah. He's keeping up pace. Uh, he doesn't need a Bridget of his own, so he's able to just begin ending, begin using his supporters and we could be in for a good game here uh, he's going to take a knockout on this Zorua using jet punch and i imagine putting 30 extra damage on the wimpod yeah exactly that's what we are going to see uh robin of course promoting tapu koko here as it has no retreat cost and that leaves him all the options he might have in this turn yeah as we previously mentioned uh, Tapu Koko with free retreat allows this play that I imagine is going to happen of uh, Glissopod coming to the active and doing a full 120 damage. We see Mew. And we see Mew. Um, Enhanced Hammer discarding the strong energy from Buzzwool and an N. I didn't oh. see the N, I was worried then for a second. And we see our support. David, David running. I wonder what just happened. It seems like something's happened. Okay, everything's fine Ball's again. Uh, Tom forgot to draw a prize card for the Zura and ran oh. that in. But okay. I was fast enough. <laughs> Okay, we did not destroy the game state. Tom forgot to take a prize card, but uh, our dear tech support and passionate judge David <laughs> managed to stop Tom from making a mistake. <laughs> if there's one person he can sort it out, it's top judge David <laughs> Hotman. <laughs> he almost made a Baywatch run. <laughs> <laughs> So and let's go back into the game and we'll play see the Zara. Soda. <laughs> we see the Zara come down. Um, Tom hasn't been able to establish Garbodor yet, obviously because Robin went first. So we are going to see our trade abilities coming off now, uh, which is more than he got last game. So <laughs> we might even see one trade this game. Wow. But I think that Tom will probably be looking to set up Garbatoxin straight away next turn to make sure that he doesn't pick up too much pace. Mm -hmm. And Robin going again for the single puzzle. That's oh. really been his save. Oh, and he's seen the second puzzle right there oh, in the that's top three. Very unlucky. Uh, can you can you see what the other cards are? Um, it looks like a Mallow. I think I saw. 
Um, a Guzma. Puzzle and Guzma is what I can see. Yeah, that's what I also saw. <laughs> and Robin just debating here on what else he can do. He wasn't able. Yeah, Robin really does not look happy, but it's just his He's got face. very important it's cards. It's a short face. And he draws two. Discarding that Guzma. I don't think he wanted to discard Guzma. No. But he also knows how important Acerola is going to be in this matchup with Jet Punch putting damage all over his field. So I yeah. think he opted. Oh. Yeah. Um, our top jump to David just realized that Tom's GX character wasn't a flip back after his last game. So, yeah. I think Tom is the player. He's been around for a very long time. And he hasn't played a lot of tournaments recently. And uh, that also uh, appeals, to my, appeals to myself. So when I'm playing a tournament, I'm just not used to having a GX attack and also these GX counters. So I forget them sometimes. I mean, even, even though it's been around for almost a year now, it's still a fairly new mechanic. I mean, you know, having these things. And oftentimes, as you said, I know Tom personally, and I know that he doesn't play that many tournaments anymore. Uh, he's often sort of around the scene doing sponsorship stuff and um, helping out the community in that way. So he's probably not even had a GX counter on his <laughs> board ever in the last year. Um, we see the Garbatoxin activate, which Tom should be pretty happy with, and the Fighting Fury Belt come down. Um, very, very good turn for Tom. Uh, that's pretty much the two things he wanted. Well, three things, should I say. Strong Energy, Fighting Fury Belt, and Floatstone. Uh, that means that he's going to be doing a total of 60 damage at least on that Tapu Lele, as well as putting 30 damage, I imagine, on the other Wimpod as well. Um, yeah. That brings them both down to 180, meaning that a simple jet punt, no, knuckle impact with one strong energy is able to knock out those Kalissapods. And we see Max Elixir, and he hit his match Elixir, as you already mentioned before. Uh, he has a very good ratio of hitting them. Uh, attention energy to carving and uh, I think Tom is in a really good board position at the very moment Yeah, especially as much as his board doesn't look that built up uh, Just by having that one energy on carving yeah. makes him feel pretty confident that even if his buzz wall does get knocked out at any point in the near future He's actually able to get down another one and have a very similar play that he did in the first game where he's able to just get two energy out of the discard and set himself back up again and obviously with Garbatoxin out he doesn't need too much he's completely shutting down Robin's game and Robin is really going to struggle to get things going yeah. uh, that Cynthia did grab Robin the crucial field blower he needs as well as two puzzle at time though a very nice hand and perhaps you might see things start to swing back in Robin's direction yeah the question really is do you want to play the field blower now because there are no girl isopods in play and also no energies in his hand so he could use it but it would maybe not be the very best turn to use it because in other turns you could just achieve a little bit more but uh, he decides to still play the field blower because maybe setting up now is just his first priority uh, he didn't look like he had too much else in hand yeah. there as well though, apart from the double puzzle. So he was probably hoping to hit some more to start increasing his board state. As we see off that trade, he did hit the Galissapod as well. Yeah, that was so that's going to start, yeah. That's going to start moving in the right direction. That first impression, obviously with Lele with a float stone, is going to start putting out some damage onto um, Tom's Buzzwall. However, as we mentioned, that minus 20 damage could come in pretty crucial here. But uh, if he... Now the ability lock is away, so he could also use Mew X ability and copy first impression, and uh, with Buzzwall's weakness, that would be enough. Yeah, that should be more than enough using Mew. It's just a case now where Robin needs to hit the second grass energy in order to be able to do that. Uh, Mew's ability, versatile, allows it to use any Pokemon's attack bearing in mind that you need the correct energy requirement to do so. Uh, but I don't think he has a grass in his discard so far. No. So we can't double puzzle for that, which means he is stuck going for the Galissapod here. It's still not the 
not about play. Usually in the Lysopod decks, you you take those two hit KOs, and uh, that's also why you play that many healing cards because you can also uh, deal with a lot of damage on your side. Yeah, I think that um, the fact that the Buzzwall's in the active here, Tom would need to hit a very very lucky combo yeah. of Max Elixir and Energy Switch in order to get enough energy on this Buzzwall this turn. Meaning that Robin realistically on this on his next turn could ace a roller this Galissapod back out of the active, attach the grass to the other Galissapod, and then take that second shot, yeah. getting himself that two shot knockout. But he does hit the energy switch. And Absolutely an energy. huge card to hit there for Tom. Completely swinging the game in his direction. And with 30 damage already on that Galissapod, as I mentioned yeah. earlier is a really 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 big amount of damage taking that galissapod down to 180 allowing buzzwall to take an easy two prizes here yeah absolutely huge card from tom hall there it he has really got to be over is. the moon and as we know robin's hand is not that good he might use his if he is not going to draw into his supporter card this tour uh, from the top of his deck he might use his double puzzles to get back a supporter card eventually so he used his double puzzle last turn. Oh. He grabbed N. Oh, okay. Um, so he does have that ready. Uh, I guess that is the upside for Robin. He knows that if Tom does take prizes here, he is able to end him down to a smaller hand size. And as you mentioned pre previously, Lydia, uh, without any natural draw support with for Tom, yeah. actually only having four cards in hand could actually hurt him quite a lot. Yeah, especially if the huge buzz wall goes down. They're, well, they're... Wasn't there? Ah, he's he energy switched it away. Of course, he's able to recycle some of his energy resources with carbing, but still, it's quite hard. You have to draw on the things you need. I mean, we see the fight and fury belt come down on Garb as well. Yeah. Uh, Tom, very comfortably in control of the game here. Uh, this Garb toxin has really been putting in work for him. But as much as Robin the has the field blower. I still don't think it's quite enough for him to do a lot here. The car bink is there and ready to go, ready yeah. to reattach those energy. Uh, playing the, even so, Tom, well, Robin grabbed the field blower from his double puzzle, right? So Tom needed to attach, well, he, he wanted to attach the uh, the Fighting Fury belt. Even so, he, kno he knew about the field player, say that said, Robin keeps the, uh, stadium card in game and maybe deals less damage with his grass pokemon that could be a potential thought process he had not only that i'm pretty sure that robin has used a single puzzle correct and then he's also used a double puzzle yeah yeah so that means that tom is in a position where he knows that robin can't get a field blower back again now with a double puzzle meaning that he has to draw into it so perhaps putting down the fight and fury belt he knew that he'd bait robin into trying to get rid of that yeah. in order to trade and it's actually put tom in a good position here to where all he has to do is find a tool next turn and that garbage toxin could stick for the rest of the game yeah that's true and he also knew that he was getting end so maybe he just wanted to get the field blower out of his hand and out of his deck and for Wimpod hits, no, I was about to... Wimpod seems not so strong here, as there's already a Galissapod in play. Um, he opts to go for the Zoroa here. Uh, Robin just really hoping to hit the DCE for Mew. Yeah. I couldn't see the rest of his hand oh, there, but... Energy. Just any energy Any would energy be would be... Good. And he uses that fourth puzzle. That was a Mallow, right? Mallow, Max Potion, Ultra Ball by the looks of things. The risky thing here is if Robin does opt to put Mallow at the top of his deck and then Garbatoxin comes up next to him, that Mallow is going to be very ineffective yeah. uh, as he's not going to be able to trade. But he could still put some cards he might need on top of his deck. But uh, we'll see what he's going to do. Yeah, he he played. Well, he used trade, not drawing into the mellow, I think. Um, and uh, well, Robin has no. Oh, he drew into the mellow, of course. Robin has no energy cards, so 
there's nothing he can really do and he yeah. decides to leave the Tapu Koko in the active position. He's not been very lucky in either of these no. two games. Missing quite a lot of crucial energy attachments here. Um, seeing the same sort of luck as Ryan Morehouse in our previous rounds, it seems <laughs> that people just can't get energy attachments today. Um, yeah, maybe not on stream. <laughs> maybe not on this seat on stream. <laughs> and there it goes and the Garbatoxin is active once again. Um, Again, putting the ball straight in Tom's park, and he really now takes full control of the game with a fully powered up buzz wall, one not far behind it on the bench. Yeah. I can't see this game going any other way at the minute. No, not really. Robin's in a really bad position, and he, he well, I can't really see him going back into the game other than a really fortunate late game end. Uh, yeah, I think a really fortunate late game end. Uh, as well as that, if he does hit the energy this turn, he'll be able to knock out that buzz wall, and then hopefully the end will be even more effective. Yep. As Tom will need to hit energy, as well as a Guzma, to bring up a two prize Pokemon into the active as well. But it just seems that Robin's only option, yeah, oh. is to use the max potion, heal that Coco, and, and then there's end. The end. And there's the end. I think that now that that's Robin's only real out is to deny Tom the cards that he needs in order to finish off the game but with the way Tom's been drawing so far I wouldn't be surprised if he gets exactly what he wants anyway there's not too much he needs he needs one energy a Guzma all of these things are yeah. absolutely perfect for Tom oh we see Robin finally drawing into energy he drew two, into two. two and I mean look at his first cards one double colorless energy and one grass energy is prized so no wonder he did not draw into them and he opts to put the DC on Lele I think that's actually a really smart play yeah. it means that Mew won't get knocked out next turn saving it to take his last few prizes if he does stay in the game for that long um, it's often said that the best players will really optimize Tapu Lele's attack yeah. uh, using energy drive to the best of your ability is really something that you see a lot of the better skill players do and not necessarily something that's picked up early on or when you're first starting out the game. Yeah, it's true because sometimes you just forget about Tapu Lele also being a, a decent attacker and these good players, they played a lot of games and they just know what and to do and yeah. As I said, Tom Guzma. hits the Guzma off the end wow. to three. Uh, again, putting 30 more on you and knocking out the Zorua. Tom is drawing like a god this game. And now Robin really needs an Acerola. Uh, well, it, it's pretty much set in stone, right? If Rob doesn't get either something to heal his Mew or energy for his Mew to attack, it's pretty much good game. He could theoretically also field blower at the stadium away and play a new stadium, minimize his bench to three and then um, discard the Mew Axe, but that's nothing you really want to do, and it also requires a lot of cards, but would be a possibility. Yeah, I think, you know, th normally watching Zoroark decks, huge plays like that, I would probably agree that that's possible. Yeah. But with Tom's Garbatoxin sitting there and stopping that from happening, Robin just doesn't have options like that. He needs to work with what he's got already. Yeah, and it looks like, well, he's already shaking his head a little bit ah. it does not look like he has the possibility yeah he guzmas the garbage in the active position locking it there and now he really has to hope that tom has <coughs> no way has has no ways to retreat this garbage Oh, oh wow, oh my Guzma. gosh, no way. Tom absolutely destroying the drawing there. Um, wow. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, he top decked two Guzmas in that game. Uh, Tom playing very well. I do not fault him at all. He made pretty much all the right decisions apart from that early mm -hmm. misplay game one. But apart from that, everything just went his way yeah, in that game. he drew amazingly good and I think there's nothing really Robin could have done in this position and in this very game yeah I think that a lot of the game Robin was just very behind yeah. and as we mentioned right at the start that did come to suffice 
Garbatox in there was just MVP, completely shutting down everything Robin yeah. could do. Uh, Robin wasn't drawing very well anyway, and normally Trade would be able to help you get out of that. Yeah. However, he didn't have that option. Uh, Tom's going to be really happy there with the fact that his Garbatoxin was able to stick. Whether it had a Fighting Fury belt or not, it just became very important in the end. Yeah, I think it was a really tough matchup as well. Uh, Mew is actually your attack card against Fighting Dax, but with this Garbador, you also uh, kind of lock the, the Mew's ability. So, yeah, it's just not the best matchup. And, uh, well, I think we should get a winner interview yeah i think that's definitely something we should do uh we definitely need to ask tom how he feels about hitting that guzma right at the oh, end of the yeah. game see you in a minute guys don't go anywhere